I have to talk about this clickbait bullshit from Variety um, in regards to Lord of the Rings. So Variety, in case mm. they delete the tweet, Variety put out a tweet. The Lord of the Rings reboot is in full swing. Runner Brothers film chiefs Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi visited New Zealand earlier this year to reconnect with Peter Jackson and discuss future films. Okay, if you go to this fucking website and click on this article, nothing about the article is anything remotely close to what Variety put on this fucking tweet. It was fucking clickbait. In fact, the entirety of this whole article is basically a fluff piece for the new CEOs of Warner Brother Pictures. Um, I want to make this very clear for people who don't know this. Warner Brothers Pictures is a subsidiary group to Warner Brothers Discovery. So they, the Warner Brothers Pictures is who makes the movies. Warner Brothers Discovery is who handles everything else. It's like a whole thing. So okay, okay. Uh, I so I'm just very confused because wait, isn't wasn't who made the original trilogy? Wasn't that New Line? I think it was New Line. It's gonna get even more confusing in a minute. But um, so basically, okay, okay. So basically, um, the entire uh, the entire fucking article is bullshit. It's just fluffing up these people. These new CEOs to Warner Brothers Pictures, it means nothing. Here's the real story. Um, Pam and DeLuca also uh, brokered a pact to make new Lord of the Rings films at Warner Brothers Pictures, and they also visited Peter Jackson in New England to reestablish the studio's connection to the franchise's original director. So basically, it's set that they want to make new Lord of the Rings films, nothing about a reboot, Uh. and that they want to have a connection with Jackson in case they need him for something. Um, <clears throat> okay, okay. Now, now I, I quickly saw. <clears throat> so, New Line is usually the, the, the go to people for Lord of the Rings. So, when Amazon, for instance, did their series, it was they did it in conjunction with New Line. Warner Brothers is doing it in conjunction with New yes. Line. Yes. Okay. So, so I get this is where it gets confusing about the licensing bullshit, right? So, New Line, New Line Cinema renews license with Middle Earth Enterprises, ensuring their continued role as the cinematic home for Middle Earth. Okay. Warner Brothers and New Line are producing The War of the Rohirrim, which is an animated show about Rohan, and um, other films in the, in the universe, right? Um, Amazon mm. holds the exclusive rights for Middle Earth TV shows, working on Rings of Plower and other spinoff shows, right? And Embracer mm. Group are the guys who have rights to make Lord of the Rings video games. So, okay. so it's New Line Cinema, Warner Brothers, <clears throat> Amazon, and Embracer Group. Those are the four people who have, like, their hand in the Lord of the Rings cookie jar. It's, I mean, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's all kind of weird when you think that, like, this is all because, like, people went to see Freddy movies in the 80s. Because, um, like, New Line Cinema was nothing, and it kind of built itself on Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm. And, like, that's, yeah. So like, but you you got to think like all those like practical effects and everything with Nightmare on Elm Street <clears throat> lead to practical effects. Fast forward with Lord of the Rings. It's, it's kind of kind of amazing stuff when you think about it. But like, yeah, but OK, so all these different groups are are coming out with their with their Lord of the Rings properties. Uh, yes. And of course, I yes. had to ask my boy Yoiston from Men of the West. He's the only person I trust with Lord of the Rings type of mm. content and the guy I go to for everything Lord of the Rings related. I showed him the article about, you know, the new leadership and then wanting to make new movies, potentially maybe a reboot. And of course, I asked for his opinion, but he's on vacation, so he couldn't join us. But he did send me a voice clip statement. So here it is. Ultimately, I think... This whole thing comes down to a lot of the changes of leadership at Warner Brothers, as the MCU has, of course, shown the financial opportunity of cinematic universes to so many companies, and I think so many companies are trying to replicate that. But even beyond that, though, I think Warner Brothers are looking to see what properties they still have and what they still have access to that they could continue to make films and money off of that fans will want to see, maybe even avoiding potential problems like... um, superhero fatigue and so forth and the lord of the rings has to be one of the more lucrative properties that they still have access to with the most untapped potential the article says reboot but i suppose they really mean extensions or anthology movies of sorts again a cinematic universe sort of thing which would produce lots of hype and lots of money 
if they do it right, of course. Again, Amazon may have thrown a wrench into some things there. I'm not, I'm not sure. From a lore perspective concerning the Third Age alone, the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit, and the Appendices, they would have plenty of material to work with. From the Angmar War, to the Kinstrife, to the adventures of Aragorn as the Rongil, to the fall of Moria, and so much more, they could certainly explore much of the lore in this way, like they are experimenting with in the upcoming uh, War of the Rohirrim animation film. I think Peter Jackson, Fran Walsh, and Philip Aboyans, the pretty much the three people behind the Lord of the Rings movies in terms of the writing and the directing and so forth, will always have a role to play for as long as any Lord of the Rings developers want them to be a part of it. I mean, see the story about Amazon never getting back to Peter Jackson on their scripts, for instance. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them as producers at the very least, assistant writers at the most. I don't think Jackson will ever return to direct a Middle-Earth film again, but as with so many of these kinds of projects, I do approach it myself with cautious optimism, yet I love the Jackson movies myself, so with him and the others having any sort of capacity in the project, and Warner Brothers likely wanting these movies to reconnect and rekindle the passion of the older movies, I'm confident about them, if only slightly from the out, I, I mean, at least more confident about them, if only slightly from the outset than I ever was with Amazon. Um, again, there's a lot of potential greed and monetary things in the mix, which I'm not, I'm not sure about all of that. Again, Amazon definitely kind of shook my confidence regarding how a Lord of the Rings adaptation in the modern day could go, but we'll see. I'm really hoping for the best for sure. And uh, I have to say, I do agree with him on a couple of things. The first being that um, this is clearly an attempt uh, attempt by Warner Brothers to make their own uh, cinematic universe here. And uh, I'm kind of mm. glad that they are somewhat reconnecting with Jackson because, let's be honest, um, Amazon did their own thing separate from the Jackson Lord of the Rings universe with their Lord of the Rings stuff. And it was, you know, yeah. we... We've already discussed this ad nauseum. It was aggressively mediocre. Not that great. Um, I do hope... Not horrible. Not great. Not horrible. Just not great. Boring. Just boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do <clears> hope <throat> there is like 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 movies that do take place in the Jackson universe that don't deal with the stuff we already saw in the movies. I would I would love to, go, to know what's going on in Dale and the Lonely Mountain during okay. the War of the Ring, you know, because we don't really cover that. Or maybe yeah. um, other stuff elsewhere that's going on in other locations. Like, that'd be fine. I, I'm okay with spin-offs. So, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm much more cynical than y Yoiston is. Like, mm. I... Like, my first assumption with all, <clears throat> with all of these companies is that they're... They're just trying to make money. They're just trying to make money. Like this idea of like passion and worrying about um, honoring source material and all of that stuff. That's just like so irrelevant to these people. It's just so relevant to any movie maker. The only, the only people that occasionally care about that stuff is some like weird freak director, you know, who, who has something briefly. So like, um, and and it's in a situation where he has un an unusual amount of power, despite like, um, you know, so like Peter Jackson on the first trilogy, because again, we, we are all forgetting that like Peter Jackson was on the second one and sucked dick. Okay. That second trilogy, the Hobbit trilogy is horrible. Okay. It's like, it's like, it's like George Lucas worship with like forgetting the prequels, like, like. Or forgetting Howard the Duck, like you know, you 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 have you like stop worshiping like one person based on like one good thing they did. Peter Jackson worked himself to death on the first Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, to the point where like everything else in his life fell apart, and he was he, he would like kill himself if he kept if he kept at that pace, and he did it for the first three movies, and he'll never do that again. And you're never going to get that out of him ever again. And you shouldn't because it's just like you shouldn't torture a human being that much. Um, it's never going to happen again. But, like, but then it did happen again with The Hobbit. Again. They brought they, – originally they had Guillermo del Toro coming in for The Hobbit and then that didn't pan out. I saw Lindsay Ellis's uh, The yeah. Hobbit documentary, which by the way, Lindsay Ellis, no matter what you think of Lindsay Ellis – and I'm saying this to the audience. Like no matter what you guys think of Lindsay Ellis, her – Hobbit documentary is fucking phenomenal. That's like YouTube gold right there. 
I absolutely loved her whole like like thesis on it. It was phenomenal. But no, uh, Guillermo del Toro was supposed to do it. I love how there's like part th- part three of two <laughs> <laughs> at the end. Like, but they they brought in Jackson because you know at the last minute and he was like writing things as they shot and. You know, uh, I, I kind of... Oh, yeah. I'm not saying he didn't work. He didn't work hard. But he didn't work as hard as he did on the first one. And it, it, it just... And he had more people trying to control him. He had less independence. You know, like like I say, like the lightning in a bottle that you're going to get on, on, on certain movies. You just can't recreate it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, even with incredible talents and everything, it's just not going to... It's just not going to happen. So, it, it's... Like, I... You know... You would have to have a situation where where some people are given a lot of power and a lot of control and and they also have to have to have to do a really good job. In fact, rings of power, those guys were dumped a whole bunch of money <clears throat> and given a whole lot of a, a lot a whole lot of power and independence on what they did. And then, you know, it just came out mediocre. So like, you know, giving someone independence doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be like you know, and, and creative freedom doesn't mean it's going to be genius. Um, so I, I just think that, yeah, we're going to see a lot more mediocre stuff coming out of, and not just rings of power. I think we're, it's, you're talking everything, you know, occasionally there's going to be something really good, but, um, you know, it's going to be few and far between. It's going to be on the stuff where you're just not even expecting it, like and or. <laughs> That's that's possible. That's honestly possible. But I I know you're not as like optimistic as Joyston is here. But I kind of am in the sense where, like, I yeah I do want I do want Warner Brothers to try and like recreate the passion uh, with the older films. Mm-hmm. Like and and like Joyston says, he's more confident about them only slightly because of what happened with Amazon. And and maybe after what I saw with Amazon, maybe I'm thinking like there's no way we can get like worse than this or slightly as bad as this. Yeah, but we can I guess. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm hopeful. All right. So, so, so here, here's here's one more thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the, the, this whole thing is, um, you know, I'm a bit older, and so I remember Lord of the Rings as a as a thing before the Peter Jackson movies. Oh yeah. Um, okay. I know where you're going here. And <laughs> yeah, it had a different feeling. Fans were different. And so a lot of people, when they see a lot of fans today, will be like, "Well, you know, the great thing about the the Peter Jackson trilogy is it is it is it um, stayed true to the tone and themes of the book." And it's like that's just it's it's such a biased perspective to say that, because like if you grew up with that being the 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 movie that you associate with the book, you're you're of course going to think that it's faithful. I grew up thinking a really stupid cartoon was the faithful adaptation of of Lord of the Rings. That a silly a silly cartoon with people singing where there's a whip, psh, there's a way. Like Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom. So like I grew up then so that colors and biases like my opinion of what like I think Lord of the Rings truly is. And you've heard me like complain like and say like you know the thing about the peter jackson trilogy is it's just not as fun and filled with songs and ridiculousness as like the original lord of the rings books but i understand that that's a biased perspective because i also grew up watching those cartoons that did have that in it you know so all of a sudden i'm like oh are those cartoons truer to to the vision which i'm sure someone would murder me to say if i said like the cartoons were were closer to the Peter, you know, to um, Tolkien's vision. So, like, you know, you, you have to step back, you know, from your bias. Like, if you grew up with the Peter Jackson trilogy, of course you're going to think that Peter Jackson is the gold standard and that's what Lord of the Rings is. Like, you know, even if, you know, how many people read the book before seeing the movie? You know, a lot of people see the movie and then they walk, go and read the books. Like, I didn't read Lord of the Rings until after I saw those cartoons. Mm. So when I was reading the books, I was imagining those freaking mm. cartoons. So everybody else, when they're reading the books, like on some subconscious level, they're, they're seeing Peter Jackson. It's very, very rare to have a situation where you read the books first and then you go see something, you know. So I think there's this that, that, that color where, where 
people want to recapture this like Peter Jackson creation from the early 2000s. And it's just, it's just not going to happen. But it, you know, it's it never going to happen. It could happen. It, I have hope. I have some hope. It could totally happen. No, no. It's this is the thing. It's it's this is this is like the endless pursuit to recapture your childhood yeah. like, and like nostalgia, like going back and trying to do it again. Oh, they recaptured the feeling of the first movie. No, they never do because you can't. You can never go back. You can never. That's the whole fucking plot of, of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> God damn it. Is you can't fucking go back. You can't. You leave the Shire. You get corrupted. Like, that's it. You can't go back. The, the Shire is is scoured. OK. It's the same, like you can never recreate Star Wars. You can never recreate Ghostbusters. You're never going to get it back. You're never going to recreate it. You can only do something new. Like Andor is great and it's completely new. You, but you'll, you'll never be able to recreate Star Wars. Getting that feeling back, right? So uh, 12 years ago, this amazing game called mm. Skyrim came out. And the feeling of, so Skyrim is an amazing game and what really holds it up 12 years later is the fact that you can mod the fuck out of it and just like it's a great new experience every time you you, you play it because you yeah, can mod yeah, it yeah. and um that feeling like every time i'll start up a new skyrim playthrough every two years i always try to recapture that feeling of when i first played skyrim you never could and then i recently right. played zelda breath of the wild great game phenomenal game i would recommend it to you i think you would love it but i know you get a, you get obsessed with it but yeah but, but, yeah, but it's a great it. game nonetheless then, that because that game came out years ago, then, the, last month, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom sequel came out, and people were a little annoyed because it reuses the same gigantic map of Hyrule and a lot of other stuff, but it also adds new things. And then it fucking suddenly clicked to me as I'm playing the game. Holy shit, they managed to do something that almost no one can do. Recapture the magic and feel of your first time playing the first game again because you play the like if you play Zelda mm. Breath of the Wild and you like you have that feeling and then you go back and you play it again sometime later it's just not there but somehow in the sequel right. they managed to recapture your first time playing Breath of, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild the first game again with new stuff it's hard to explain it's something you have to experience but i fucking love that so it's yeah. it is possible but very, very, very difficult. Like I say, it's like <clears throat> you eat that first Cool Ranch Dorito. You can never get back to the same <laughs> feeling of that first Cool Ranch Dorito. You get through the whole bag and you're like, fuck. Yeah. You know, um, this is this is the plot. This is the plot of Lolita, by the way. What's it called? If you uh, know the Lolita. <clears throat> oh, Lolita. OK. Yeah. So this the story is about a guy who like has this. He's like 13 and he has this like really incredible like summer romance with this other girl. And so he's always trying to like recapture the happiness he had when he was 13. And so he like, he like, you know, abuses this girl and to try to recapture it. And then she like grows, she gets to be like 16 and he's like, ah, she's too old. You Jesus. know, he just can't recapture it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, it's a book where you're supposed to like revile the, uh, the um the protagonist he's he's a maniac but uh is, is it like um, catcher in the rye where yeah. you're supposed to kind of hate the guy you're supposed to kind of hate the protagonist yes absolutely <laughs> more much more oh. so much more so than even catcher in the rye yeah much more so yeah uh so like you know it's it's um that it's all these movies you can't you can't recapture you can never recapture lord of the rings you know, you can only move on and do something new and different and, and, and try to be and try to try to be interesting um, as, as something new. 